Have you been diagnosed with cancer and are you blaming yourself? What did you eat or drink that could have caused this? Maybe it was your stress levels or maybe it was some kind of trauma that set off the cancer cells. Or maybe you're worried that you'll get cancer in the future or have a cancer recurrence. If you just knew what caused the cancer, then you could prevent it, right? If this sounds like you, then you need to watch this video. In this video, I'm sharing with you the known causes of cancer, what is actually known to cause cancer to happen, and more importantly, what does not cause cancer. Hopefully, this video will put your mind at ease. So why does cancer happen? There are really two main reasons why, genetic risk factors, and DNA mutations. Let's get into both. We do know that there's a genetic risk for cancer. About 10% of cancers are caused by a genetic link. These are faulty genes like BRCA1 or BRCA2. They're passed down from your parents, so you're just born with them, or they can happen spontaneously so that you're actually the first person in your family with that gene. But there are some faulty genes that have not been discovered yet. This is a situation where many, many people in a family are diagnosed with cancer, but there's no identifiable genetic factor that shows they're at a higher risk. Clearly there's something that's being caused by a genetic mutation, but we just don't know what exactly that genetic link is. This happened to a woman that I work with in the Cancer Freedom Program. Every single woman in her family had been diagnosed with some type of cancer. Her sister, her mother, her grandmother, her aunts, They'd all been diagnosed with either breast cancer or ovarian cancer, but on a genetic screening, everything came back negative. Now, clearly there is a link here. There's some genetic component at play, but we just don't know what that genetic link is. The good news is that for women who have a positive genetic screening, well, there are very specific strategies we can take to lower your risk of cancer. At the end of this video, I'm gonna share with you three things that you can start doing right now, today, that will effectively lower your risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence. As a cancer survivor myself, this is exactly where I focus my energy. This is where you get to take control. So that's 10% of cancers. But what about the other 90% of cancers? We do know that cancer is caused by DNA mutations that happen over time. Something happens to the DNA of a cell that causes those cells to start misbehaving and become cancer cells. For a healthy cell to become cancerous, certain things have to happen in order for that cell to continue to grow and mutate and become cancer. It also needs the ability to create its own blood supply and move around the body and through tissues in order to invade other parts of the body. Now, most of the time, our bodies actually stop cancer cells from happening or progressing. When a cell mutation happens, it's detected by the cell itself. And that cell effectively kills itself to stop it from going any further. It detects that something's wrong and it stops. It's our body's way of protecting ourselves. But if a mutation happens at a very specific time, that mutation can go undetected and the cell will continue to grow and evolve into cancer. We do know that mutations in cells can be caused by known cancer-causing chemicals things like nicotine or alcohol. We know that these compounds can cause DNA mutations that can lead to cancer. Now, other people hypothesize that DNA mutations can be caused by chronic stress or trauma, but there's never been any scientific proven evidence to show that this is factual. But a lot of DNA mutations are just random. They just happen. Now, cancer is more common in older people because the cells have had more time to divide and replicate, and there's been more opportunity for DNA mutations to occur. There are known cancer risk factors from your lifestyle, your environment, and your hormones. But what is unclear is why people who have been exposed to no risk factors still develop cancer. We've all heard stories of the super fit, super healthy 40-year-old who goes for her first mammogram and is diagnosed with breast cancer. There is just still a unclear understanding as to why women with no risk factors still develop cancer 
and why women with many risk factors may live a cancer-free life. Now, we do know that one in two people will be diagnosed with cancer in their lifetime, but let's look at this breakdown by age. 80% of cancer cases are diagnosed after the age of 55. This often explains why screening guidelines roughly start when they do. Now, not to say that younger people don't get cancer. Of course, we know that's not true. It's absolutely possible to be diagnosed with cancer at any age. Okay, but if you've already had cancer, what do you need to know? There is sadly no way to guarantee that you will not get cancer or you will not have a cancer recurrence. We simply do not have the knowledge yet to be able to do that. For example, even women who are genetic carriers, like BRCA carriers, and they have both breasts removed to reduce their risk of breast cancer, well, they could still be diagnosed with breast cancer without any breasts. There's still a small risk of developing breast cancer. But how can that be, right? The breasts have been removed. How can the breast cancer return or develop? It's because we cannot be sure that all very small or microscopic cells have been removed. It only takes one cell, something so small you can only see it under a microscope to begin to develop into cancer. But it's not all bad news. There are three things that you can start doing right now, today, to lower your risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence. These three things are in your control. You can start doing these today, starting with number one, limit alcohol. Alcohol is known to be linked to increasing the risk of cancer. It's rated as a grade one carcinogen. It directly stimulates cells to become cancerous. But alcohol can also increase the amount of estrogen in your body. We now know that this can cause cancer cells to grow. If you can, completely stop drinking alcohol. This will limit your risk the most. But I totally understand if you want to enjoy life while still lowering your cancer risk. As a cancer survivor myself, I do still occasionally drink alcohol. Maybe on New Year's Eve or at a girl's night when I get the friends together. Life is meant to be lived and alcohol is how we participate socially. If you don't feel like you can completely eliminate alcohol, then let me give you some numbers to help guide your decision. If you drink less than seven drinks per week or less than one drink per day, you'll increase your risk of cancer by about 9%. As a cancer survivor myself, 9% feels significant. A 9% increase in my risk of cancer is not something that I wanna take on. But if you drink less than four drinks per week or less than a half a drink per day, well, this increases your risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence by about 4%. That feels more manageable to me. If you drink even less than this, then the risk will presumably be even less, even though we don't necessarily have the literature quite yet to support that. But now that you know the exact numbers, you can start making choices on how many drinks you want in a week based on the amount of risk you're willing to take on. Okay. Onto the second thing that you can do to lower your risk of cancer. Number two is to maintain a healthy body weight. This is hard to hear, I know. As a cancer survivor, I gained 20 pounds during my cancer treatment. The steroids, the surgeries, the hormone changes, and the emotional eating. There were so many factors that caused me to gain weight, but being at a higher or unhealthy body weight, it does increase your risk of cancer. Because of this, it's worth taking the steps to bring your body weight to something that's healthy for your size. And the last thing that you can do to lower your risk of cancer or a cancer recurrence is to use targeted exercise. We know that women who hit target exercise levels, they can lower their risk of a cancer recurrence by up to 59%. Wow, that's such a huge way to lower your risk of cancer. This would be using a combination of low intensity cardio and strength training. You can start by just walking. This would be a great way to start lowering your risk of cancer. And strength training can start with just your body weight. You don't need to use weights or fancy equipment or get a gym membership even. You can start with just your body weight. Okay, so now that you know what causes cancer, let's dive in deeper to how you can use targeted exercise to lower your risk of cancer. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step right now 
click the link here. I'll see you in the next video.